Here's the link. Can you tell me if, if it lets you in? Yeah, I see. Now I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, it was crazy, Sam. I had <laughs> only one day off which was also busy because when you have only one day off in a week <laughs> there's a bunch of things you have to do so yeah. I, I, I feel as if I didn't have a, a day off actually. Because <laughs> you have to pack everything into your one day. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I understand. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just gonna put this up on my screen. Hello everybody. Um, so I just sent the link to you in the chat box. I'll put it in that one too. Um, today we're doing some descriptive writing. Uh, so you can actually edit right in the document. Excuse me. Um, you just have to pick a topic. So there are 10 topics that I've chosen here. Camping, your perfect day, a disease, a frightening event, a life-altering experience, your first job interview, the perfect job, life in a big city, the ER room of a hospital, a sporting event, or um, if you want to come up with your own, be creative. <laughs> and you can just think and write about whatever you want at the bottom there. Um, it's very free, this class. There aren't really any guidelines except that you're meant to be very descriptive. You're describing a scene, uh, what the characters look like, that sort of thing. So lots of adjectives and adverbs. Uh, the thesaurus can be helpful for this, <laughs> so I put it there for you. Um, but you just choose a topic, write your name, and then underneath you can write your story, paragraph, essay, however long it, it becomes. Um, and when you're finished, I'll edit your writing for you and give you some feedback on where to improve. Um, so that's how it works. Hey, Ming, you changed your picture. <laughs> yeah, I did. It's like, what is that? A bear? A teddy bear? Yeah, it's a Japanese bear. It's cute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just for you, teacher. Just yay! For you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, does anyone have any questions? Is it clear how the class works? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, of course, I'll be sitting here uh, the whole time. If you have questions about anything, I can answer them while you're writing. Um, and that's it. So you have about 30, 30 40 minutes, 35 minutes-ish to write. Uh, you've got lots of time. Um, if you write something shorter, then you can write more than one topic, or you can just choose to write one big, long story. That's fine, too. Okay. Uh, what's, what's number 11? Be creative. Number 11 is, like, do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, okay. If you decide you don't want any of the topics I chose, then you can just make your own. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Good luck. <laughs> Let me know if you need help.
Who's that? Zaki. Zaki. Okay, let me find you. Okay, just gonna like this. Okay, nowadays, comma. Life in a big city is very busy. People do not have time to see each other, even though they comma. And it should just be people, not the people. Okay? Even though they are living together. This is life going on in a big city. This is, I would say, this is how life goes in a big city. Most of the people who are living in a big city do not respect others' views. I think maybe that's a new paragraph. People only want money. Either they are doing any wrong. Um, okay. Even if they are doing some bad things. I think you want even if instead of either. Um, life in a big city. Totally changes a person. I think people who are living in a big city become greedy after some time. They always think about themselves. For example, one of my friends was living in a was living in the countryside is one word in the countryside, but two years ago he moved to a big city to earn money. When he was living in the, oops, the countryside, he used to call me as well as send texts. But now the situation has totally changed. He does not call me, even though I, I've called him. Um, he has not responded. So you want to use the perfect tense here to show that um, this started in the past and has continued into the present. Okay. So I believe that that big cities change a person and make or how about just change people and make them too greedy. Be careful which two you're using. This, this is my own experience about life in a big city. In conclusion, I want to say that people should earn money, but not, but try not to become greedy. They should live the same way they were living before the job. So, please do not forget your past. If you're, be careful about the different yours, your and your, earning good money. It is dangerous for everyone. Okay, very good, Zaki. So, just little things like, um, you do this thing where halfway into a sentence you put a comma and then the subject again. Like people in big cities, they get greedy. But you don't need they because you've already told us the subject is people in big cities. So avoid that sort of double subject in a sentence. Um, and be careful about your tense. Make sure it's consistent. Okay. Um, very good, Zaki. Good job. Is anyone else finished?
Okay, you should be wrapping it up, so I'd like you to finish in the next, like, five minutes, okay? And then I'll come in and do some more editing. Okay, Jorge, you're finished. Okay, yes, ready? I have some problem reading, uh, writing, but well, this is I'll, something that I could write. The document, there's something weird with the document, too. Uh, I don't know why, but it's a little annoying. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, a perfect job must be something like it could let blend between... Okay. Must be something that would let me no. This is hard to fix here. Blend between my passions and things I like to do. Okay. Must be something that lets me Combine, maybe? Better? Something that lets okay. me combine my passions and the things I like to do. At the same time, it must... You've put two verbs here. Be, give. So you just need one. It must give me enough time to... Sh to we usually say spend. Spend time with your family. Um, then okay. time, yeah. For example, some things I like to do are reading, traveling, and meeting new people because you have ing, ing, right? So you want to keep it consistent. Okay. When you yes, have a list, I, I I thought, but it's so uh, weird for me, and uh, that's the reason that I write to meet. Okay. Yeah, so when you have a, like a list of verbs, uh, they're very likely going to be in the same tense. Uh, okay. And they're working like gerunds here. They work like nouns, reading, traveling. Um, now, some things that I'm passionate about are learning languages and teaching. Another important thing is that the job has to. Don't forget to conjugate. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> has to bring me challenges. 
that let me put me in test and keep me motivated. Ah, okay. Um, I see what you're saying. So uh, the job has to bring me challenges that there's an expression that put oops put me to the test. Put me to the test. It's an expression to say that they they test you. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Keep me motivated to move forward. Of course, that job must give me. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. One sec. Must give me enough money to live without problems. Good. Or without any problems. Uh, I don't know okay. if there's a job like this, <laughs> but you know, dreaming doesn't go out so much. Very good. Um, okay. Hey, maybe you should be a verbling teacher. <laughs> yeah, but, but I need to learn first many language. Sam, I, I would like to ask you for something. Uh, I sure. have seen that uh, the English punctuation have uh, some difference with Spanish punctuations, especially uh -huh. with commas or yeah. another kind of punctuation. Do you have a uh, I don't know, plans to do a, a class like this, something Actually, like this? Actually, um, one second, let me find you, hold on a sec. I, we did, um, a couple weeks ago, some punctuation workshops, and actually it was a while ago, it might have been a couple months ago. <laughs> um, but let me find you the videos, and maybe I'll do those classes again, but you can take a look anyways um, one sec let me find them oh, I, I be, um, it'll be glad um, okay just give me one minute I sh it shouldn't be too hard to find Okay, we did semicolons, commas, quotation marks, and... Some yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to get you the links, and then maybe um, next week we'll, we can do some more if, if you want to. Okay. I, Here I is... appreciate it. Um, today we're going. Oh, it's going to be a big echo. This one's quotation marks. Um, this one is. I don't know. Another punctuation workshop. <laughs> this one is. Comma. Hello, teacher. How are you? Sorry. And this one is. <laughs> semicolons. Whew. <laughs> That was Eduardo. I can hear it. That was Eduardo for sure. Hello, teacher. Um, so there's four there. Um, all right, and then maybe next week I'll I'll do some more punctuation workshops if you want in the morning. Okay. I like teaching please, please. punctuation. Actually, <laughs> I enjoy it. Uh, okay, excellent. So, Thank you so much. next, some people are done. Ming, Ming, I was reading your story while you were writing about little Ming Ming. <laughs> oh my god. It's so funny. Okay. Uh, when little Ming Ming moved to a small town in in the mid oh, what happened? The <laughs> Midwest from his native country. He was just a young boy who didn't know anything. Ming, where are you from actually? <laughs> China. Thailand. I don't. I don't think I've ever asked you. I just know that you live in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Oh, he was curious about his surroundings because everything was new to him. The buildings, the trees, even the people looked different. They had blue eyes and blonde hair is uncountable. Ah. Uh. And <laughs> little Ming Ming. Oh, you sound so cute, little Ming Ming. <laughs> Felt like he was in a. No. And he was frightened. Hello. Hello, teacher. 
Hi, who is that? Sophia? I have some problem with my connection. I think. I don't know who's talking. And hear you. Well, uh, Sophia, uh, try to refresh the Hangout. It's weird. I, I, she's muted for me. I don't understand. Do you hear me when? Uh, no, it's kind of like a robot. <laughs> so it's probably your connection. Uh, okay. Little did he know that his neighbor felt way toward him. They had never seen a person like Little Ming Ming. They asked Little Ming Ming all kinds of questions. Such as... Where are you from? And why are you here? Little Ming Ming didn't know how to respond except nodding and smiling. Except by nodding and smiling. Aww. Some people liked him while others thought he was a bit weird. Are you a bit weird? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'm a bit weird too, so it's fine. Uh, little Ming Ming was a shy boy, but he was popular in school. Girls were curious about him and asked him all kinds of questions. Little Ming Ming didn't know what to say except, or I would say maybe didn't know how to answer or how to respond. Okay. Except by, oh, you put by in there. <laughs> <laughs> Not again, fine. Soon, some of them got bored and moved on to other things, but some of them were nice enough to teach Little Ming Ming English. One of them was a girl named Chelsea. The first word Chelsea taught Ming Ming was trick or treat. <laughs> she was a pretty girl with shiny blonde hair and sparkling blue eyes. Oh, this is why you like blonde hair and blue eyes, isn't it? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> she was always smiling and nice to everyone. She told little Ming Ming that she was a devoted Christian. She thought that everything happened because it's in it's in the Lord's plan. She believed that Ming little Ming Ming was God's gift to their little town. And it was her mission to help him learn English. Little Ming Ming felt uncomfortable at first of her over-the-top enthusiasm, but quickly got used to it. After all, little Ming Ming could use someone to teach him English. <laughs> Trick or treat? <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Little Ming Ming was confused, and he didn't want to look dumb in front of Chelsea. He went home and looked the phrase up in a dictionary, word by word. But the definitions didn't make any sense. However, when Chelsea showed him a cus, cu oh, costume of Dracula and a few pumpkins, everything became crystal clear to him. Oh, free candy! <laughs> Little Ming Ming smiled as he recalled the Scooby Doo episode he saw. Uh, he watched. He had seen the night. Before. Before, yeah. He would never forget that word again. Oh, we both added a space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is really good. Just like little things as usual. And trick or treat actually is usually hyphenated like this. Oh. Uh, yeah. Maybe he did forget. Jesus. <laughs> trick or treat, yeah. Um, and... I probably know though it's Scooby Doo episode you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch Scooby Doo Halloween special when I was a kid. <laughs> okay. How old were you when you moved to the States? Too personal. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, like thirteen or fourteen. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good job. Awesome. I don't like blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> it's just a lie. Don't okay. don't trust her. I don't you didn't trust Chelsea? No, no, I said don't trust Sam. I don't oh. I don't like blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Some boy says hi little Ming Ming. <laughs> We're gonna call you that from now on, I hope. You <laughs> no. I hope you yes, know. I will call you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's your name forever now. Okay. 
Uh, Samboy, you're next, okay? Here we go. Uh, Samboy, and then Alexandra, and then Donato. Okay. It, I think Sophia is still having some issues with her connection. Okay, here we go, Samboy. The life experience that altered the way I used to behave a lot started when I was diagnosed. Diagnostic is an adjective. Diagnose is the verb. Diagnose. Oh, I see. Uh, gastric reflux stage. Okay, instead I would say stage three. We usually put the stage before the disease or like whatever it is that you have, the illness. Oh, okay. Okay. Gastric re reflux or GRD is a disease that um, this acid from the stomach flows up to the esophagus because the patient's sphincter that is used to plug the acid has a problem. Okay, I think I need to fix. Is, is a disease where the acid from the stomach flows up to the esophagus because the patient's sphincter that is used to plug the acid has a problem. Whew, complicated. <laughs> For example, in my case, comma, I sleep after having dinner. Um, do you mean you eat dinner and then three hours later you sleep? No, I mean I should sleep after three hours, but I sleep. Ah, okay. Right uh, so in my case, um, I'm supposed to sleep three hours after having dinner. Okay? It's just the order of your phrasing. Oh, I see. Um, so the acid has destroyed... Mm, do you mean if... Um, can you explain what you mean by this part? Hello. Um, I mean... When, if I sleep early and there is something in my stomach, uh, it will go back and the acid will destroy. Ah, okay, okay. So you want to say, um, I'm supposed to sleep three hours after having dinner, so the acid can't, can't destroy. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, it was just your, your choice of wording here again. Um, it takes around three hours to digest the food that you eat. But I eat late and sleep too early, according to what the doctor said. My doctor told me that people who are, people is plural, yeah, at this stage, usually have to take medicine at least two months, uh, for at least two months, or forever. The doctor will prescribe the best medicine for the patients, for patients in this stage, to stop to stop the disease from, um, so this is an expression, to stop something from something. And it's usually followed by a gerund like this, to stop it from getting worse, okay? Okay. Um, and developing to the final stage where there is no medicine that can help but surgery. Um, I don't want to have surgery and I don't want to suffer from the horrible chest pain. I decided to eat on time three times a day. I started taking care of myself, eating healthy and on time, doing regular exercise, and sharing my life lesson with my friends. So um, to keep this sentence active, you want the ING here to show that you're still doing these things today, right? Okay, yes. Um, I've learned that the life tragedy, I've learned that a life tragedy can be the best lesson for everyone. Not only me, but my friends. Can be the best lesson for everyone. Not only me, but also my friends. To rearrange priorities in life. It is not how much success in business, but it is... Um, so when you're saying it, you mean like life? 
Yes. Life is not about how much success you have in business, but rather how cleverly you live your life. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. So it's really for you, it's mostly um, like phrasing and your word order. Like yeah. where you're putting the words, where you're putting the commas, um, that sometimes can get a little bit confusing about what you mean. But the 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 words and the vocabulary that you're using are excellent. It's just about finding the right balance of, of where to put them, especially in very long sentences. Um, another thing is you're very often forgetting your uh, articles, the, yeah. a, and. So that's something else to. Um, maybe do a bit of review with your articles, okay? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. very good. Um, who's next? I think Alexandra, right? Yeah, okay. Alexandra? Which oh, one? What? Oh, Alexandra and then Donato. I've, I'm saving the best for last, Donato, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, uh, you're so romantic. Oh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to make this a little bigger so everyone who's watching outside can, uh, can see it. Life in a big city is engrossing. I see a problem right off the bat here. There's no paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> so I think maybe we're going to need to fix that. Um, okay. It is hands down not the way, easiest way of living, though. Comma, though. Firstly, you have to commute to work every day. If you don't have a car, then this process can be really annoying for you, definitely. Um, Jam-packed transport with no elbow grease, furious and displeased passengers, traffic jams. You know, okay. So, first of all, what do you mean when you're saying elbow grease? Like, no uh, free space. You mean elbow room. <laughs> yeah. Because elbow, room. elbow grease is like when you put physical labor into something. Uh -huh. you like put some elbow grease into it. So you're mixing up your phrases. <laughs> but that's okay. Elbow room is also a phrase. No elbow room. Um, the other thing, there's something about this sentence that it's missing. Maybe it's missing a verb. Um, something like, I don't know. Oh no, I see the problem. Jam-packed transport, furious and displeased passengers, and traffic jams, mm. and get on your nerves, and lead. lead you. uh -huh. Yeah, like this. Mm -hmm. It was just missing something there at the end, and lead you to red miss. Okay, new paragraph. <laughs> Moreover, you should not forget about high prices for everything in comparison with the... Countryside is actually one word, countryside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In comparison with, or to, with, in comparison to. I'm, yeah, I think they're both correct. I always say in comparison to, but mm -hmm. I, think, I think they're both okay. It might be a British thing, actually. Um, obviously, you will also feel the lack of fresh air in the city. The streets... A lack of fresh air. A lack of fresh air. Um, the streets are dusty and not that clean as for not as clean as, for example, in smaller towns, let alone the countryside. So, in just a typo, in terms of ecology, the environment is abysmally bad, but it just comes with the territory. I love that word abysmally. Um, <laughs> I just used it in an essay myself, actually. So, you should be prepared. Still, I do believe that the advantages of living in a big city outweigh the disadvantages. Uh, and instead of at least for me as a new sentence, I would do it like this. At uh -huh. least. I'm enchanted by the fast-paced atmosphere. I enjoy the hustle and bustle of the city. Ooh, <laughs> it's blue. I don't know why. Um, I can only feel alive when I'm surrounded by people, different people from all walks of life. I can't stand that slow humdrum... Oh, no, country life, sorry. I, w I would also like to live somewhere where there are a lot of skyscrapers. Somewhere where is a little bit awkward, but it's correct. 
Um, you could just put with. Somewhere with. Uh -huh. Yeah, just so to eliminate the where where. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was correct your way as well. It's just about flow. Um, they're really dazzling and give you give you the impression that they can reach the sky. Big city cities never sleep. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> well, the latter statement. Oh, that's weird. You answer my question. <laughs> oh, that's true. To wrap it up, I would like to say that life in a big city is nothing but great excitement and joy. Okay, excellent, Alexandra. So, um, again, like just little things. I mean, barely any mistakes, really. Um, be careful about your sentence structure. Like this one was getting a little confused. Um, uh -huh. But I do have to commend you. It's it's very good that you're you're reversing the order and that sort of thing. Like putting the list first instead of da 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 can lead you to and then a list. Um, it's it's good to be mixing up your structure. So that's great. Um, just be mindful of what comes at the end so that it makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was it, like a few phrases, right? As clean as. Um, mm -hmm. But besides that, yeah, it's excellent. And don't forget your paragraphs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Later. My story is not real, and I don't like it. <laughs> Poor Ming. Like, I don't mean to pick on you so much, Ming. Just kidding. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Donato, are you ready? Yeah, just a question. Red mist means confusion. Does what mean confusion? Red mist. No. <laughs> what does red mist mean? Red mist means that you become furious and cannot control yourself. Yeah, it's um another expression is you see red. Ah, okay. You're so okay. angry you see red. Red mist is just like just furious. You have no control. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here we go. I do not really know what in my life could be considered as an altering experience. If I close my eyes and if I were to close my eyes and think about it, maybe firstly I, I would fancy about fancy about that's very British. <laughs> Which is fine. I, I've I've never I would never use this expression. I'd fancy. I yeah, I was just avoiding uh, to repeat. Think about it. Maybe I would think. Ponder. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's the different words you can use for think. Um, ponder about the first meeting with about my first meeting with the girl with whom I fell in love. Oh, that's a very like old-fashioned way to uh, <laughs> to write that, would, but I think it's good. Write Samantha. No, it's it's correct. It's fine. Um, but normally I would put the girl that I fell in love with. That I fell in love with. Okay. Because okay. Okay. This is more um, mm, lower register of language, whereas this is is more proper sounding, um, and because it's a casual text. I would do it the first way, but it's yours is correct as well. Okay. Um, I'm referring to the first love of my life, the one which, despite the fact that it is. Yeah, I. Okay, I, I think you want to put who first of all because it's a person. Okay. Who, despite the, okay, I'm just going to change this. Despite yeah, not being in your life anymore. Okay. 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 I see what you're trying to do. It's just tricky. Um, remains in your mind and your heart forever. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just the wording right here. That's all. Um, mm -hmm. It was. It was some years ago. It was some years ago. It was. That sounds weird. A few years ago. <laughs> um, it was a crazy morning with sudden changes of weather, changes in weather. I was in the city center on duty watching over the monument of an unknown soldier. At that time, I was in the patrol because suddenly the weather became really dark and violent. Driving, 
Rain. Okay, I think you need to start a new sentence here. Driving rain had started to drop. I would say um, the rain had begun to pour. We talk about pouring rain rather than driving okay. rain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, soaking is a word for getting wet. To soak okay. something is to get it wet. So soaking whatever was uncovered. Um, unexpectedly, I saw a girl. She was struggling against the wind in order not to make her umbrella turn. And we call this inside out. Okay, turn yeah, I know exactly what you're it, what you what you mean. <laughs> like yeah. it turns backwards and that's that's what we call it. Yeah. By the strength of the wind. This happened to me all the time in France because I bought a cheap umbrella and it rained so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, after a while the wind prevailed and finally she gave up. Afterwards she slowly approached our car and grudgingly I had to roll down my window, allowing the rain to get inside from from only a tiny opening, okay. maybe, or a crack. Okay, 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 okay. You can say um a crack in the window, and it means like it's just open a little bit. Okay. Um, I remember that, although she was irritated for being completely soaked, irritated about being completely soaked, she asked me for directions displaying a beautiful smile and two big commas between your adjectives, okay? Sparkling blue eyes. Facing such a crazy character, I decided to get her telephone number and she gave it, she gave me it. Oh, okay, she gave me it without hesitating. In the end, she was not the love of my life, but one of her best friends was. I met my sweetheart that night and the first contact and our first contact was not too explosive. Maybe she did not notice me at all. We get we began actually I would put this in this paragraph and then yeah. um, we began dating a few weeks later, and believe me, it was me who fell slowly into a romantic and passionate love. Ooh, <laughs> you are very romantic, Donato. <laughs> this is excellent, very good. And again, it's like your wording more than anything, where um, the order of your words and the, the words that you're choosing sometimes sound a little awkward, um, but you're taking chances with your writing, which is good. Um, and hopefully you learned a few new expressions like pouring rain, inside out, that sort of thing. Um, okay. Don't forget commas when you're describing something. Commas between the adjectives. And yeah, yeah besides that, it's really great. Very good to know. And you never say some weeks later, some some. I I saw that you always write a few a few maybe a some. Few, yeah, we don't usually say some weeks. Okay. Because some is generally used for un. I mean, you can, but it's kind of improper. Some okay. is used for uncountable nouns, like some water, some gasoline. Whereas a few is used for countable nouns. Weeks are countable, so a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, that's it. Thanks for coming, guys. Let me just pull this down. Um, I'm Thank gone for a, a while, and I'll be back later with two more classes, um, and tomorrow, of course. So maybe Thanks, I'll see you. See you. See you later. Thanks, Thank Bye. you. Later. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Bye.